You might not think that you've been waiting for this day, but trust me, you have. Today, everybody, my mother, Grandmaster Pia Kramling, played against the person that all of you know. Oh no, my queen. Oh no, my rook. Oh no, my everything. International master, Eric Rosen. My mother is participating in the Gibraltar Chess Festival Battle of the Sexes. Now, if you don't know where Gibraltar is, it is right here, everybody. It is situated in southern Spain, although it is part of the UK. The idea of the tournament is that there is 10 women that are playing against 10 men. Both teams have the same average of rating and the same average of age. It's 10 rounds and there's 100,000 pounds in prices, 75,000 pounds for the winning team and 25,000 pounds for the losing team. And this was round seven of the Gibraltar Chess Festival Battle of the Sexes. Here we have the game, everybody. I've been watching and following it today and having, you know, my heart beat to the chess moves because I get very stressed when I'm watching chess that almost rhymed. But now that I've watched the whole game, I can go ahead and give you the analysis. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go through the whole game. Knight of three, d5 d4 this immediately transposed into a queen's gambit eric rosen went for e6 which meant that he went for a queen's gambit decline as he decided to protect this pawn instead of taking this one bishop g5 was played just to pin the knight and immediately d takes c4 was played there's different ways that you know you can continue you can go e3 because b5 is never really that great of a move as you can always counter it with a4. But instead my mother went for immediately queen a4 check. Now with this move she is checking but at the same time she's threatening the pawn. So if she wanted to she would be able to take this pawn the move after. Knight bd7 is a very logical move by Eric just to get his knight out. Even though she could have taken here right now to get the pawn back, she went e3 just because she would rather take it with the bishop than with the queen. If she takes it with the bishop, then she's developing another piece at the same time as she's taking a pawn. Her queen would not really be doing anything on c4. So, bishop e7 was played here. Eric is just trying to develop as fast as possible. He's going to be castling very soon. And my mother now went for bishop takes c4 castles queen c2 she decided that her queen was not really doing that much here anymore and it could also if it stayed here could have been kicked away by knight d6 which would have been a fork on the queen and the bishop forcing her to lose her bishop pair so she went queen c2 c5 immediately counter the center very 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 common move in these kind of structures where black doesn't have any center but immediately wants to attack white center so it makes a lot of sense to go c5 now in this position there's many moves my mom could have castled kept the pressure but she decided to go ahead and take the pawn eric rosen went for queen a5 check just to ask where this knight is gonna go and to later on take the pawn with the queen he could also have decided to take with the knight with the bishop it wouldn't have been so good because the bishop is pretty good over here stopping this bishop on g5 from being any strong he could have taken with the knight this was also a another option but he decided that he thought his knight was well placed over here and that he wanted to take it with the queen instead so knight c3 was played knight bd2 could have been another option but the idea of knight c3 is that my mom want, wanted to go for bishop d3 and because she knew already that she wanted to have her bishop on d3 looking at h7 this knight would make more sense having over here because it's controlling more squares than what it is doing on on d2 on d2 it's a little bit more passive so she decided to bring it up to c3 queen takes c5 bishop d3 my mother had a main idea throughout this whole game on taking on h7, which is the reason why she's waiting with castling, etc. It's because she basically has an idea which I'll be showing you very soon. b6 was played. Another idea also of not going knight d2 is that after queen takes d5 in castles, there might be b5 immediately, which, you know, could be pretty good for black because after something like bishop d3 takes takes, black's pieces feels like they're just a little bit better coordinated in this position so that is just a little little side note okay so she went knight c3 queen takes c5 bishop d3 and b6 the idea of going b6 is that this pawn right here is blocking this bishop from ever moving so i grosso wants to put this bishop on this diagonal where it's going to be active a3 was played the idea is to go b4 and like i said before she's pointing towards h7 let's say that a random move like this would have been played then the idea is that she can go b4 and if something like queen d6 then she has bishop h7 check because after knight takes h7 
she would have 94, forcing the queen to leave the protection of this bishop. And whenever the queen goes somewhere, maybe queen b8 or whatever, then there's bishop takes e7. The idea is just to take away the queen from the defense of this bishop to be able to take this pawn right here. And whenever the knight takes back, because the king cannot take back because of the queen, then this bishop over here on e7 is going to be hanging and she will ultimately win one pawn. But my mother quickly realized that after bishop b7, b4, queen c7, she could not take on h7. And because she couldn't take on h7 now, I'm going to show you why, going b4 was probably a bit of an inaccuracy because it left this knight on c3 pretty unguarded. So bishop takes h7 doesn't work right now due to knight takes h7. If king h8, then, you know, my mom has just won a pawn. But knight h7, after bishop takes e7, which is the idea that this bishop is unguarded over here, then there's actually rook f c8. And right now with rook f c8, we can see that there's two pieces attacking this knight over here and the knight cannot move because then the queen is hanging. So the only move would be to go rook c1 to defend this knight. But then after bishop takes f3 and pawn takes f3, there's this move knight e5, which is very, very strong because bishop is hanging. The bishop cannot go anywhere apart from this square over here in h4 but after bishop h4 there is knight f3 check and the bishop is lost due to this fork for instance f4 would have been played instead this would have been bad because there's queen b7 in this position threatening this rook and let's say that something like rook f1 is played there is knight f3 check and we can see now that this knight is defended by the queen so after something like king h2 knight takes h2 and this this bishop is gonna fall and this king is gonna be super unsafe and this is just a complete disaster. This is not something that she wanted to walk into and she did see it at this point, but she had already played before and already weakened her position a little bit. So she ended up having this weakness on c3. So rook c1 in this position was played instead of bishop takes h7. Bishop takes f3 was played. G takes f3, knight e5, immediately attacking this pawn, but also threatening to take this bishop to get rid of this bishop here for white. Now, you may ask yourself why Eric Rosen decided to simplify over here. Probably the reason he did it was because he saw this immediate knight e5. Even though there might have been other moves that might have been a little bit more annoying, like rook a c8, uh, just to put some more pressure in, on this file. Bishop takes f3 is also a completely fine move, even if you are giving your bishop pair, because one, white is destroying their pawn structure, but two, you also have this immediate move, and this turned out to be a little bit annoying. So, bishop takes f6 was played in this position. Now, if bishop takes f6 and there's bishop takes h7 winning a pawn for white so you can't really do that or allow that if knight takes f3 this is actually losing a piece for eric because you have king e2 threatening this knight and because you've already taken this knight over here you're gonna end up winning a piece because you cannot both defend this knight and take back this bishop you cannot do two things in one in chess unfortunately so instead, Eric Rosen went for knight takes d3, which makes all the sense in the world as this bishop is a pretty good piece for white. It's definitely like white's best minor piece. So he decided to exchange that, also to get rid of the bishop here. And after queen takes d3, bishop takes f6. The plan of my mom was to go king e2 because the king is pretty much safer on e2 than what it would have been if she would have castled, especially because this diagonal might have become a little bit weak or just in general, the king's side is a little bit weak. So it makes sense to have the king in the center. If now the queens are exchanged, then the king is also going to be favorable over here than castled because you want to have your king in the center. And now everybody, you may look at this position and say, okay, so this is looking pretty, pretty, pretty close. Uh, and it is, I mean, I would say maybe black has a little bit more of a comfortable position because the king is safer. The pawn structure is better for black and this bishop is pretty strong right now. Definitely stronger than this knight at this very moment. Rook a c8 was played by Eric, you know, activating a piece. And then later his second rook is going to be going to d8 probably. Now this is a critical moment in the game because in this position this knight is pretty much worse than this bishop so in this position she just basically wants to exchange those and in this position my mother opted to go for a move that would change a lot of the outcome of the whole game she decided to go for the move knight a2 the idea of going knight a2 is basically that she's just, you know, taking away the queen, activating the rook. She's also defending this rook on c1. She didn't want Eric to get two rooks for a queen. Typically, it's a little bit favorable to have two rooks over a queen. Depends a bit on the situation, but 
she didn't want that but in this position the move that we just have equalized the game would have been to either go knight d5 or knight e4 with the exact same idea of just taking on f6 so if knight e4 for instance we can go ahead and look at this move queen e5 knight takes f6 queen takes f6 you basically just have a pretty equal position you can just go queen d2 in this line you're just gonna be exchanging everything and you shouldn't really have any big problems here as white so this would have been a very solid way of continuing the game and if queen takes e1 which was what she was probably afraid of after takes 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 knight takes f6 pawn takes f6 queen d7 my mother is going to be getting these pawns and this is actually kind of tricky uh because if my mom is able to get these two pawns and have these two pass pawns this could become very strong for her probably at some point you know rook fc8 has to be played but she's always going to be able to escape like there's no mating net or anything like that i mean it's something like this the king is always escaping rook c3 so this is totally fine for her and this would have led to a much more complicated game there would have been chances for both players this would have been a lot better than what happened with knight a2 the problem with this move as we're gonna see is that this knight does not have anywhere to go all of these squares are taken by different pieces this knight is completely trapped you know the saying a knight is grim on the grim no a knight is grim on the rim yes because this knight cannot really go anywhere queen e5 was played and this is a very strong move threatening queen b2 check and then taking this pawn is after let's say queen b2 check the only move to save the knight and everything is to go queen d2 then you can see that this pawn is hanging and if this pawn is hanging then we're also going to see that this pawn is going to be very weak and this there's just going to be a lot of weaknesses and rook f8 is another threat the queen has very few places to go to us this knight needs to be protected so my mother decided to go a4 now probably something like queen b1 or queen b3 would have been better options to stop this move from happening but she decided to go a4 and after queen b2 check queen d2 and queen b3 the issue here was that it was really hard to protect all of the pawns on the queen side there's not really anything she can do if queen d1 the knight is hanging if a5 the problem here is that there is takes takes and then there's rook f8 and even after something like this queen b5 check king e1 this is gonna be very 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 hard to play for for white because there's threats of queen b1 and rook c2 my mother decided to take on c8 rook takes c8 and then to go rook c1 and just attempt to exchange everything now she accepted the fact that she would end up being a pawn down she thought that it'd be better to fight off this way but we can see that all of these problems come from the move knight a2 if she would have played knight e4 or knight d5 with the idea of just exchanging all pieces and just entering an equal end game all of this would not have happened queen takes a4 was played now my mom is a pawn down knight d3 defending everything queen c6 queen a2 very important move in the future maybe stopping moves like a5 now the thing is that this pawn is not really attacked because of the fact that if queen takes a7 there's queen c2 check and this knight is hanging so this pawn is actually indirectly protected. She decided to go f4. You know, if this king ever moves, have this pawn uh, defended. h5 was played, h3. King d2, my mother is just kind of waiting to see what Eric does. a5 was played in this position, which is a good move. After takes, there was queen c3 check. King e2, now it's uh, important to take with the pawn because this pawn is very strong in this file it would have been easier to stop the pawn from promoting on this file but over here it's very close to promoting and this bishop is also looking at the promotion square which is very important queen e4 was played just to stop the pawn from pushing queen c7 e4 was played now he went back king e3 the idea of e4 was just to get an extra square and bishop e7 was played the idea of this is to go bishop b4 and then maybe just holding on to all of these squares this is a great way of advancing as this knight can never take this bishop over here because then this pawn is going to be unstoppable so king e2 the king went back at this point my mom had the option of going queen d4 check but she just decided that it was probably just going to be completely lost and game if they exchange queen so she didn't do that so king e2 bishop b4 uh queen b5 was played queen d4 check king f3 she he's she's just defending this pawn the king is going up bishop c3 the idea of bishop c3 is just to start pushing this pawn knight c5 was played just to stop this pawn from advancing bishop e1 threatening checkmate in one knight d3 they went back and forth a little bit just to get to the time control just to get those 40 moves in as the players get extra time over then bishop d6 was played and this was a really strong move and now my mom thought for 15 minutes and ended up going queen b2 
But after Queen B2, she's forcing the Queen Exchange because she didn't really see what she could do otherwise to stop the pawn from pushing. So she went Queen B2. Eric decided to take. I mean, there has to be a Queen Exchange right now. Bishop C5 was played. King started moving around. Knight A4. King went up. F3 just to protect this pawn. G5, very strong move. The fact that this knight is over here and it's not doing anything, it's almost like Eric is playing a piece up because he can just do whatever he wants with this bishop, whilst this knight is stuck here defending this pawn from promoting. So king went to d3, bishop g1, e5 check, king f5, takes, takes, and we can see that now all of these pawns are going to fall and there is nothing that my mother can do about it. And after king h4, my mother resigned because there was really nothing that she could do about you know, king takes over here and then oh, this pawn promoting. Unfortunately, my mother lost against Eric Rosen, but Eric Rosen played a really great game. So GG's to Eric Rosen. This was really a really well played, really well played game. All I can say is, oh no, mom's night. I do hope that you enjoyed this video and the recap. Go ahead and check out Eric Rosen's channel if you haven't already. He's an awesome, awesome, awesome content creator. And if you did enjoy, please consider subscribing to the channel and giving it a like as I would super appreciate it. See you in the next one.